Now I will go to the third lecture of week 12 and uh, in this lecture I will talk about the relation between the band structure and the density of states and the electrical properties of materials. That is I will talk about uh, metals or conductors, insulators and semiconductors. Okay. So, week 12 lecture 3 will be talking about metals, insulators and semiconductors. By metals I, I mainly refer to conductors. Okay. The whole idea of uh, electrical properties of materials is based on the band structure and the possibilities that you get from filling of the bands. Okay. Now, uh, if you recall what we said uh, in one of the earlier lectures was that, uh, was that the, the way we, we calculate the electronic structure of materials is to first make the band structure. Okay. So, this band structure has a E as a function of k. So, you first, so you first calculate the band structure and uh, I will just again, again for simplicity I will show the one dimensional picture, but uh, you can do this in higher dimensions. So, let us say this is the range of allowed values of k okay. and uh, you have a band structure that could be something like this. And uh, what we said is that uh, once you have the band structure, you look at all the possible states. Okay, so these are the possible states. So 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 basically, the states correspond to different values of k. So if you look at the k axis, you can tell how many states are there. Okay, again, these the number of states is given by the bond von Karman boundary conditions. Okay, so so you keep. you have all these states you have all these possible states okay in the end uh, in some states even for this band then what you do is once you have these states you start filling electrons into band. So, you count the total number of electrons okay, and you start filling them into the bands. So, so, so depending on the number of electrons you start filling them. Okay. I am showing only one. Okay, so, you can think of it as a spin state or you can think of this line as, as two electrons okay, and you start filling from the lowest energy onwards. So, so you keep filling okay, and let us say you have you have lot of electrons you have lot of bands also. Okay, so, you keep filling them and, uh, and uh, again, again you fill you fill from the lowest energy onwards. So, you have to fill you have to look uh, very carefully how you fill the fill the electrons into the bands. But when you are done with this exercise then uh, you see the you, you are left with some uh, the the electrons you keep filling bands up to some energy. Okay. This is the highest, this is the energy of the highest band that is filled, highest, highest state that is filled. Okay. Now, uh, now, this approach that we took is a zero temperature approach in the sense that, uh, in the sense uh, at T equal to 0. Okay electronic configuration is strictly ground state. Okay, that means, that means you start filling from the bottom and you fill only up to uh, up to the highest available state and uh, this energy is called the Fermi energy E f. So, the Fermi energy is the highest occupied state at t equal to 0 that is called the Fermi energy. Okay. Now, uh, there are different possibilities. Okay. Now, in this particular case your uh, Fermi energy in this case, okay, so this is case 1.
Fermi energy intersects several several bands okay one or more bands it doesn't matter one or more bands so so basically basically one or more bands are partially filled are partially filled so if you see if you see this band okay it is only partially filled it is only filled up to here whereas this band is completely filled similarly this band is completely filled okay this band is partially filled okay so uh, one or more bands are partially filled okay the second case okay you could have another case okay i'll just show it schematically below here now uh, in this in this case uh, let me i'll draw a slightly different let okay let me take a fairly similar band structure okay but uh, let me consider the case now where the fermi energy is right here okay so that means all these bands are completely filled oh uh, well okay I, I i want to change that a little bit because i had i don't want this line okay sorry i'll just change this a little bit so what i want to show is something like this and uh, let me say this goes somewhere here okay so so now what you find is that uh, these two bands the two bands said the, the lower two bands are completely filled okay so the fermi so they are filled all the way all the states are filled or occupied whereas the upper two bands are completely empty so so this is the second case fermi energy is at the top of one band okay implies some bands are completely filled okay I emphasize the word completely and rest are completely empty okay now um, in this case in case 2 there is clearly a band gap okay there is a band gap in this case okay because uh, because there is a difference in energy between the between the last filled band and the first vacant band okay uh, and uh, and so and so there is a band gap okay in this case there may or may not be a band gap in the first case but clearly uh, you see that the fermi energy at least intersects several of the bands okay so now we can see that these two cases case 1 where the fermi energy intersects several bands and case 2 where the fermi energy is is at the top of a band these two will have fundamentally different electrical properties okay so uh, now let's let's now uh, look at the electrical properties so so uh, the first case okay that corresponds to a metal one is a metal or more more precisely it's a conductor the second case can be either an insulator or a semiconductor a semiconductor is uh, so uh, in this case you have a band gap okay so so in this case we have already seen that there's a band gap okay now uh, 
an insulator has a large band gap. whereas a semiconductor has a moderate or small band gap. Okay. Now, when we use the word large or large or small, you should ask immediately what is large with respect to what. Okay. So, uh, this word large and moderate small are with respect to to thermal energy. Okay. Now, uh, the thermal energy uh, measure of the ther thermal energy is actually the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Okay. And uh, when we look at this value, okay, uh, this so uh, at at T equal to 300 Kelvin, which is about room temperature. Okay, you have uh, K KBT equal to 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 into 300 joules. Okay, so the unit of Boltzmann constant is joules per Kelvin. Okay, Boltzmann constant, uh, Boltzmann's constant is uh, 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23. So, KBT is uh, so many joules okay, and uh, I can write this as uh, into 3 okay, into 10 raised to minus 21 okay, divided by 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19 joule per electron volt. Okay. So, this will give me the value of Boltzmann constant in electron volts okay. and uh, this works out to about uh, 0 0.026 electron volts. Okay. So, the thermal energy in electron volts is typically of the order of 0 0.026 electron volt. Okay. So, usually if your band gap is, so typically insulators have band gaps much higher than uh, 4 or 5. Okay. So, so insulators have large band gaps okay. this is several electron volts. Okay. Semiconductors have have of the order of uh, 1 to 3 electron volts. Okay. Now, what that means is that is that uh, with sufficient thermal energy your semiconductor can actually conduct. Okay. Now, if you see if you see this is 0 0.026 is still much less than 1 or 3 electron volts, okay. but uh, semiconductors can use uh, another property called doping which is used to increase the, the number of uh, charge carriers. Okay. Uh, I won't be discussing that, but uh, just in terms of band gap, we see that uh, insulators should have a much larger band gap. But if you have a band gap of the order of one to three electron volts, uh, then you would call it a semiconductor. If you have much larger than uh, four or five electron volts, then you would call it an insulator. Metals, of course, do not have a band gap. Metals or uh, conductors do not have a band gap. Okay, uh, and uh, so this is the basic picture of. Uh, electrical conductivity of solids. Now, uh, let me hit now look at the density of states and uh, what that implies for the for the case of the band gap. Okay. If you look at the density of states, I will just I will just schematically draw the density of states for a, for a metal. So, for a metal you will have you will have some uh, density of states. Okay, again, again, I'll use the same. Uh, I'll plot g of ep, g of epsilon on this scale and epsilon on this. Okay, you'll have some density of states. What is uh, what is interesting is where the Fermi level is. So the Fermi level will be. Uh, let me show it slightly differently, just to emphasize a few points. I'll get. Uh, I'll have. I could have. Uh, I could have states like this. Okay. 
Now uh, the Fermi energy could be will be somewhere here that is in between uh, some set of density of states. Okay, now uh, this is a direct consequence of the fact that the Fermi energy intersects several bands. So, it will be in one of these uh, one of these big uh, bands. Okay. In the case of uh, in the case of uh, of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of an insulator, okay. Now your uh, G of E will look like this, okay. And uh, now the Fermi energy will be right here at the top of some set of bands and there would be a band gap. I am showing this, I mean you could have again you could have several, uh, you could also have things like uh, uh, things like uh, you know having lot more structure. So, if you look at the G of E, you could have you could have things that look like this. Okay, you could have multiple uh, bands, okay. here I am just showing two bands. Okay. You could have you could have things like this, and you could have you could have the Fermi energy somewhere here, EF. Okay. Then what you'll say is that all these bands are all full. Okay. These all all these all these energies. Okay. These are states. States corresponding to these energies are fully occupied. States corresponding to these energies are occupied. In the case of the conductor, you would say something like this: that all these states all uh, these states are fully occupied. Now, the states corresponding to these energies are actually partially filled. Okay. In this case, you will just have all these states being occupied. Okay. These are insulators. Okay. So, these two are either insulators or semiconductors depending on the size of the band gap. Whereas, this would be conductor. Okay. So, a lot of information about the about the nature of the material, okay, the electrical properties can be got by looking at the band structure. Now, notice that uh, in addition to band structure, okay, this is a very important point. So, I am just going to emphasize this that in addition to to band structure, we also need E f. Okay. So, you need the Fermi energy. Okay. Now, uh, at 0 Kelvin, okay, at 0 Kelvin we just do the, we just uh, find the Fermi energy by looking at states by filling states from the, from the bottom states. Okay. At finite temperature actually this uh, you know some of the, there can be some excitations. So, at finite temperature there is a probability that uh, even the even the higher exci even the more excited states are also possible okay so at finite that is non zero non zero temperature this is greater than zero okay uh, excited states are also possible are also occupied okay and uh, you define something called a fermi level level okay uh, which is basically this is something uh, this is something that is uh, that is slightly different from the from the fermi energy so the fermi level okay that usually usually if the fermi energy is uh, in this case you have a fermi energy here but there can be excitation so some of these higher states might also be occupied Okay, the Fermi energy is uh, some sort of uh, it is it, it is some level. This is the Fermi level, okay. And uh, this I'm not I'm not going to go into this in detail. But the Fermi level is a concept that is useful at finite temperature. And uh, this this has to do with uh, something called the Fermi Dirac distribution. Dirac distribution. Okay, and uh, I'm just mentioning this, okay, but I won't expect you to know this, and uh, I just expect you to know the Fermi energy at uh, t equal to zero. 
but the Fermi level is a, is a useful concept at non-zero te temperatures. Okay, that has to do with the Fermi Dirac distribution and the Fermi level is where the Fermi Dirac distribution takes a value of half, the occupation number of a state is, uh, is equal to half. But uh, again, we are not going to describe that in detail, but just this is just for your information that at finite temperature, you can define the equivalent of a Fermi energy, which is called a Fermi level. Okay. But uh, again, for this course, I just expect you to know the Fermi energy and how do you understand the difference between semiconductors, uh, uh, between conductors and insulators. Okay. So, uh, with this, I will conclude this lecture, the third lecture of the last week of this course. And uh, in the next lecture, I will, I, will, I will use the same band structure and the band gap to talk about the optical properties of materials. Okay, so, whether how, what, what should be the property of the band structure in order for a material to absorb light, what should it be for it to emit light and so on. Okay, thank you.